So again, we talked about it's not a it's quite a sophisticated strategy, and there's a lot of documents to get in, in place. Um, and it's been around for maybe about 20 years. There's been a number of court cases on it, and we've always uh, provided the documentation is is on point. Uh, they've always been held up to be fine. So uh, again, if we've got a family home, investment property, shares in our trading company. You know, anything that's in our own name, as I said before, it's great for tax, negative gearing, great for tax and family home, principal place of residence, but it's terrible for asset protection when we, if we're litigated against during life and also a state, it means it potentially falls into that contested will uh, carriage, uh, character. Um, so the first thing what we want to do is we want to build that family protection trust. Uh, remember, we have the family protection appointment tours for bloodline only. If you've got other people you, you want who um, are not bloodline, uh, there's the special uh, rules in there that enables the family protection appointor to put in place um, someone, for example, you could put in place Nick um, as um, a beneficiary, but you might limit it to a year or two years or, you know, while they're good friends or while they're a good child <laughs> or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, so you've got a lot, a lot of uh, flexibility around that. So we put that in place. Again, we've got our bloodline beneficiaries. Remember, we want to have that succession place. So who's the first family protection appointment to a second, third, and fourth? Now, what we do is, uh, did you end up getting that picture just so I can yeah. explain it? Perfect. So what we do is we look at all the assets in your own name and we go down to a level that even like, you know, watches. <laughs> Obviously not a... Although you never know, Casio might be making a comeback. They might be vintage, but you know, any <laughs> flash watches, the sort of stuff that um, you know that uh, Ben wears. You know, some really nice stuff. <laughs> company shares, yeah, yeah company shares, uh, family home cars, and 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 we don't necessarily need to focus in on the assets at this stage. We want to find out what the net wealth is, and in this instance. The net wealth is uh, 1.6 million. So it might, for example, the home might be worth two million, but it's got a million dollar um, uh, first mortgage on it by the bank, which is fine. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we get that 1.6 million, and so if I did a personal balance sheet of mine, then it's the 1.6 million is is all the wealth to my name. Now remember, it excludes current SMSFs, include excludes current stuff inside trust because they're already protected from our trustees and bankruptcy and family provisions claims. So we're just trying to get the stuff that's in our own name or in joint names. And so what we do is we get the 1.6 million and we gift it into the family protection trust. Now, we haven't got any cash at that time um, because it's all tied up in the assets. So what we do is we issue a promissory note. So the gifter um, says, okay, well, I'm, I'm giving you this promissory note, which is like an IOU, uh, $1.6 million. The best way to think of it is just the, the, the act that actually brings in promissory notes also deals with checks. It was actually issued first in 1909. So there's a long body of law around it. Um, so you do a, a promissory note that's payable on demand. And so suddenly that will reduce the wealth um, of the gifters or the individuals you, you yourselves and now passes it over to this family protection trust. So the family protection trust has actually increased. And it works well in Australia. It doesn't work so well overseas because in Australia we don't have gift tax, uh, whereas all other jurisdictions who have duties, death taxes, um, what they do uh, with that one, um, the, they also have a gift tax as well. And I can tell you within the next 5, 10, 15 years, there will definitely be... Um, death duties or death taxes. It's just simply there's that $7 trillion being passed. The governments can't really, you know, miss out on that when they have a look at a budget because anyway, that's that's part of the story. So the wealth has been increased inside the Family Protection Trust. So what they do is you then get that wealth and then you lend it back to the original person so that they've still got all the assets in their own names, uh, but there's no value there. So they're just simply legal title holders um, and almost holding it on trust for the Family Protection Trust. The uh, result uh, of that is that uh, you'll then go on to, um, second mortgages uh, for properties um, and then uh, for uh, to secure, for example, the cars, the watches, the loans on that. 
uh, you can uh, go into what we call the personal property securities register um, and that can all be done fairly easy and we've got services to do that one so the beauty about that is there's no transfer in assets mm. so there's no transfer in assets there's no capital gains tax and no stamp duties i mean ideally it'd be great to have all those assets directly inside the um, that family protection trust or living member trust but we don't need to do that because we've just simply transferred the wealth um, if you get sued, uh, because what happens is the trustee in bankruptcy um, can uh, claw back or, or make void transactions such as gifts or anything that's undervalued. And it's only got a four-year period now. So if you put that in place now, uh, within four years' time, by the time 2026 comes around, it doesn't matter, so they can't go back. But generally at practice, um, you'll find that uh, if it's been in place for one or two years, um, they generally don't try and claw it back. What they'll do is they'll negotiate a settlement, which might be 10, 20 or 30 percent. So, again, um, you want to put it in yesterday uh, to get it down the track. If it's um, if we have a, uh, a will, then what happens is, remember, I went through the process, you get probate, you get the executor. And remember what I said for that is the executor has to pay off all loans. So the first thing the executor has to do is transfer those monies over to the Family Protection Trust. And once they've done that, hopefully there's going to be nothing left in the estate. So the no-win, no-fee lawyers aren't going to get anything because it's now all consolidated where Ben said is that, that Family Protection Trust. And again, we just got to make sure we get those um, our Family Protection appointed to us really well. At a, at a first level point of view, um, the you know, Family Law Act, you know, if you're the appointor of that, um, that family protection trust, they'll be able to go say, well, hold on, you're really controlling it. But when it's passed down to the next generation, or if you're not even involved in that family protection trust, you're concerned about it, um, then in that instance, it won't become matrimonial property. So again, family law is like its, its own little uh, blissful area, uh, but you can protect yourself uh, for it. But when we talked about estate planning. So the family protection trust is great. Um, if you um, already in for a first mortgage um, with a bank, um, then what you can do is uh, the people that we use to register the mortgage, uh, the legal services firm, uh, they'll negotiate with the bank for you. So that's uh, you just pay a flat fee for that, uh, but that then secures that that mortgage because you don't want to be in a position that your executor says, "Well, hold on, um, I'm going to pay." secured creditors first, then everyone else if that's not secured. So you want to make sure you've got. Um,